So you can understand why Corolla would want to run it back because he all he's got to do is just do a little bit more. You know, I finished strong. So the, you know, in that mindset, he thinks he's got a shot. But you know, from the outside, I don't think he does. I think Lenars wins it a little bit easier the second time around. I, I, I think he's, he's going to say he needs to start fast. I think he, if 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 he didn't. If he didn't start way behind, if he didn't start behind the eight ball, which, you know, an R.S. just was better. Mm-hmm. But if he didn't start behind, he wouldn't have had to work himself into the fight. But at the same time, it's going to be less competitive in a sense if he actually thinks he's in the fight. That's what, had, that's what kept him in the fight. For the most part, is him thinking he was in the fight. Because at the end of the day, you could tell him, oh, you're ahead, or you're right in there. And it's like, it's competitive. If, if, if that fight was in Vegas, would you think they would tell him, would you think he would, have, he would believe that that fight was closer, close as those scores were on that card? Do you think his no corner would give him that that, that reassurance that come you got it you yeah. it. they would have told him look dude you need to you drop these four you need to you know you need to get the next four matter of fact you need to get the next eight yeah so I'm uh, you know what I'm off <laughs> I'm off all right um, this weekend this is what your marquee matchups are Joseph Parker. Alexander Dimitrenko and all you're looking for for this is Parker to keep on building because a fight with AJ seems to be looming with Anthony Joshua seems to be looming as he is the number one contender but um, I don't know if they're going to get that November date I doubt it I doubt it I don't think they're ready for that and then on Golden Boy Live you got Peter Petrov and Michael Perez in a WBA lightweight eliminated. Like I said, the lightweights are in focus. Peter Petrov, the name sound familiar? He is the guy who won the Boxino tournament. Uh, he hasn't kind of he's he really hasn't unfortunately hasn't cashed in on it. But I, I like the fact because I like him. Is a Spaniard? Who sp- I mean, he's a Russian who speaks Spanish. <laughs> How do you not like that? Um, the fact that he's gotten himself into an eliminator. Like I said, the lightweight division, and I like Petrov. I mean, I watched him all through the boxing tournament when ESPN actually showed boxing. Mm-hmm. There was a day when it, that happened. We're going <laughs> to tell our kids about those days. I remember. It was 19. They started days with 19 years? I'm a little bit older than JP. I don't know if you remember, if you remember all that stuff, but I remember the days when ESPN showed fucking old-time billiards. I remember you the day. Billiards? Billiards, man. Eight ball. Yeah, I know what you said. I just wanted to make sure you said it. Billiards, yes. They showed that shit. What was that movie? What was that fucking movie? Uh, Dodgeball? Yeah. Ocho? The Ocho. Yes, yes. This is when there was only one. They showed Australian rules football. So much so that I knew about it. I knew about all the black colleges. They used to have a show called uh, Black College Today or something like that. Black College Sports Today or something like that. I knew about the Jackson State and all them, all them guys when... And on the West Sonic Coast, boom. on the West Coast, we don't have none of those colleges. So you, I was, it was like it was like, why they have colleges just like yeah, that? You I, know, I, you I, don't know these things. I know those things. I remember the original poker being on ESPN before you could see the hold cards. You know, they were going <laughs> before to, Phil Ivey, and, and <laughs> before Phil Ivey, before uh, Phil Helmuth, and, and uh, let me go What's through. What's the dude with the hoodie? The Unabomber. It's a uh, uh, Phil. Uh, a lot of guys. Phil Losk. Yeah, there's a lot of Phil. Phil Locke. That's it. He's dating Jennifer Tilly. Good for him. Uh, But we're going to tell our kids one day, you know what else ESPN is to show? Boxing. I saw a boxing tournament. Peter Petrov won it. He's fighting an eliminator. They're like, I don't believe you, Dad. There's no way that boxing was on ESPN. But it was. You Uh, have to watch it on YouTube. (laughs) Um, But anyway, those are the two big fights because October is in the shits. Why? Because before I, before you get started, we know that Tyson Fury medically unfit to fight. So that fight is off. Um, 
And it was supposed to be about October 29th or something like that. Which was the only fight in October that was worth anything. You know, a big fight, you know. So now we have nothing. And when I was talking last week, when I was asking, you know, I want the listeners, the people on Twitter to tell me what they feel about the state of boxing, where they think it's at. And uh, not tons of votes, of course, because that's not what we do. But it, 54% of the people thought boxing's okay. Just okay, you know. Nothing great. Not awful, but it's like, eh. And you don't want people to be, eh. You either want them to be totally pissed off or totally happy. Eh, get you nothing. It's like wrestling. You want half the people booing you, half of the people cheering you. If they don't give a shit about you, you ain't going to be getting that next contract. Uh, believe it or not, the second highest one, which I didn't think it would be, would people think, I'm fine with it as it is right now. Boxing is good right now. fuck is wrong with y'all? 29% of the people said that. I was, was kind of like, hmm. I didn't expect that. And then the next one was uh, 13%. Uh, I actually thought it was awful right now. All boxing awful. And October will rival for me August as the worst boxing month. Now, I don't remember which fights was in there, but I remember doing four shows in a row with you, JP, that we were struggling to find to, to find topics and to content to do a show. When they were getting 40-minute shows, it's like, man, I got shit else. All and, tricks, no treats. And we're back into that. We're back in that now in October because Fury and... And Klitschko, too, was off. Now, the story is the the doctors found him medically unfit, depression, um, anxiety. What else? Anyway, you can take it for what it is. And for now, unless I, you, I, fi- I find out that it's bullshit, I don't fuck with that stuff. Because I know I have family members. I've actually suffer. I actually suffer from anxiety, which brings on depression. And triggers can be the smallest thing. For me, being in the passenger seat of a car brought it on to me every single time. I had to be in the driver's seat. If you had me in the passenger seat, I was fucked. And there was nothing I could do to turn it off. So. For me, I don't mess with it. I'm not. I'm not going to question it. Now, if it comes out that he's lying and he's full of shit, then I'm going to hit on him because it's a personal thing to me. To where I'm like, I got too many family members who have dealt with it. I've dealt with it, and for somebody to actually kind of use it as an excuse, I'll be all over him. Until then, I will hold off my opinion. But I know you got an opinion on it, and feel free, even if I don't agree with it, feel free to unload. You know, I'm really too angry to actually <laughs> unload completely. Because <laughs> Getting out of the chair, shit. I'm going to just put it to you like this. In the history of boxing, fighters have dealt with a lot of shit. So I don't see what his problem is. You know, me personally, I think he, he, found, he found his way his way out of the fight because he was scared he was going to be a target from this point on. I think he gave it up. The reason why I say that is because, you know, being a former, you know, dealing in athletics and being a former athlete, you, you re- it's different when you're the, the hunter and you, you're the hunted. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. He wanted the belt. Now he got the crown. The problem with the crown is even if you beat Klitschko, somebody else coming. Somebody else coming. Somebody else coming. And I think he, he folded under the pressure. Because at the end of the day, what, what you telling me? You, you, you got in a car accident. Now, it'd be different if he said, I got in a car accident. Somebody died. I got freaked out. You know. And I can't do it. I could give you a pass on that. But just to say, I'm depressed. Um... Who was that? Was was that was that Spinks whose wife died? I don't know. Uh, Bob Chacon's wife died. No, no, no. What, there, there was a heavyweight fighter whose wife died on the way to the fight. Oh yeah, that was Spinks. Is that He's, Leon Spinks? I don't, I don't know if it was him or his brother Mike. Was that Leon against? Was that? I don't know if it was him or Michael. Oh. But he fought. 
if it ain't that serious, I can't buy it right now. I remember when it was Oliver Moore that had to break down in the middle of the fight. Oliver McCall. McCall. He fought. I, obviously, he shouldn't have been fighting, but he fought. You know, Mike Tyson's life was, was anxiety and depression. He fought. I'm glad you brought that up. Man. Here's the reason. Here's the reason. Here's the reason that I'll, I'll let you get back to yeah. that. Well, go ahead. Finish it off and remind me to hit on Mike Tyson. And okay. I'll, I'll tell you. Muhammad Ali fought. We ain't even got to explain what Muhammad Ali was going through. Sonny Liston fought before that going through stuff like that. People fought, man. And what pisses me off about Tyson Fury is, dude, as much stuff as you've done, you 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 play crazy. You play like you are over the place. You play like you you're hyper masculine, hyper everything. And now people are supposed to give you sensitivity because you hyper hyper depressed and hyper anxious. They can't do that. Remember, you Batman and the Joker. You can't like you can't do that. You, you was just fine when you was when you was playing games and going to court. And now you now when a fight come, you're not ready. If you, if it, in my opinion, you got comfortable. You let yourself go more than you thought, and you realized all the games I'm playing, Klitschko is ready to fight for real. Now I don't know what to do. And oh shit, now I really got to start training a couple of weeks in. And it ain't, it, the kicker for that is, if that's the case, why does he keep in the belt? See, it'd be different if he say, look, I, I'm not fit. If I know I'm not fit, give up the belts. You can't tell me you're not fit and you keep the belts and then let everybody else fight and they say, oh, I'm fit now. I'm ready. No. What if he wants to be stripped? No, I'm just now. I'm just throwing stuff out there. What if, what? Because I, I I heard a podcast and I'll give it a shot. I was a UK podcast, New Age pod, New Age boxing podcast. I don't know the guy's name, but he broke down um, what he thinks some of it, this is, and then I'll get back to the Mike Tyson mm -hmm. correlation. You can only climb. There's only the first time that you can climb to Everest. And they, his whole goal, this was his career goal, was I want to win the heavyweight title. Then he does it. Now what? He didn't have the plan afterwards. Not that he can't do it, and I think actually he probably knocks out Klitschko in the rematch. Still, I still think that. But I don't know if he wanted to put in that same dedication, that same work. Weird correlation. A rapper's first album compared to his fourth album. First one's strong because there's a lot of desire and heart into it. Fourth one's kind of commercialized, kind of fucking sucks. Most of the time, that's usually how it goes. That then that's a lot of singers and everything else. There was a struggle getting to they where they got. That. Well, there's no more struggle. You're now rich and you're famous. So whining like an Eminem about your mom. Doesn't sound as good. Doesn't sound as good even as the though, first. Even though they gave him 20-something million <laughs> album sales for that. I'm just saying, you know, it, it, so maybe once he climbed that mountain, he had nothing else. And he was saying, now he's said, I guess, in, in other interviews, and they have way more over there that they've heard, that he really he wanted to fight Klitschko, win that title, fight... Um, Wilder? Wilder. Win that one and then fight Joshua and retire. Boom, done. By the, by the age of 30, which he's only like 27 years old. If that was his goal, maybe he does want to get stripped. If that's his goal. He's already beat Klitschko. Like, I, <clears throat> you know, kind of like the, you know, say like almost a Mayweather type personality. Like, I already beat you. Oh, Roy Jones, I already beat you. I have well, I don't need to do the. I'm just saying that's just me. That's just th throwing something out there. 
And when I talk about like Tyson, so, okay, say, and I don't know the medical history of of um, of Tyson Fury, mm-hmm. but that guy on the podcast was saying that you know he won a title and he kept brought it back to his country and he was treated like shit. Right. That's why I brought up Sonny Liston. Yeah. And he never got to celebrate his his win. And he's already thought of as less than anyway because, you know, the gypsy they don't you know, they are a lot of a lot of uh That's why I brought up shit. Ali. Yeah. yeah. So so he's seen that stuff which adds into it. Say if he is clinically depressed, right? Say he is. Say he suffers from that stuff. Like Mike Tyson. He does too. He suffers mm-hmm. from all that stuff. And he'd be like, Yeah, I'm on Zoloft, so I don't fucking kill motherfuckers. Like you remember that? Mm-hmm. Do you know why he was like that at the press conference? Because for training and for the test, you have to be off of that stuff. The worst thing you can ever you can ever do with any of those the, those anxiety pills or depression pills is to get off of them because and it, it, and it doesn't changes. yeah and it doesn't affect everybody the same but what if you know if you got to get into training and now you got to go off meds you can go off the rails it happens to a lot of people like you if you get off Ambien like right away just a sleep aid like you have suicidal thoughts right so I don't know. That's why I say I don't want to get too deep into it. From for me, because just because you went through something and I go through something that maybe is a little bit less than, maybe for whatever reason for me it's harder. You know what I mean? And vice versa. Right. But so that's the only reason that I don't. That I I won't compare it to anybody else because when it's when you're talking about the brain and the mind. To me, it's a little bit different. Now, if he broke his hand and he quit, no, no, because that's just bullshit. Everybody goes through that stuff, you know, that, that in the yeah, sport that you're in. That's why I'm saying, like, that's why I said heavy is the head. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. I've seen people that I've had as opponents. I've seen people who I play sports again. When you knock the will out of them, they look for an excuse. But see, what's worse is when you knock when you that's why I was saying it's different when you when you're the king now mm-hmm. it's like you're talking about at the top of the hill it, his anxiety is not just Klitschko his anxiety is I wanted to be the champ I didn't necessarily want it to be the king of the hill because see when you're the king of the hill everybody coming for you even if he beats Klitschko it's another person coming even if he be, it's always the constant the constant coming and everybody ain't prepared for that you know, so it's one thing. That's why I, I that's why I do not like Adonis Stevenson. But see, he knew that when he won that belt. Mm-hmm. That's why I made that reference. I think he's gonna be holding on this title for a while. He knew he he wasn't ready for that constant attack, so he was gonna run and hide. That's my knock with him in general, and that 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 doesn't. It's a difference to it's a difference when you meet a person who tell you. I'm going to kick your ass. You're like, okay. Well, okay, well, let's go out there and handle it. Hold on, look, I'm going to call the cops because you you getting too serious. That's what I think Tyson Fury is doing. Because at this point, it's like, you asked for this. You went down this road. You played these games. And now it's time to actually show up. And now, now you have an issue. No. Your, your issue is that you got Klitschko staring right at you. And then you know even if you beat Klitschko, you got somebody else staring right at you. I don't think, the, the, for me, I don't think that, that that's a thing that bothers him. I think it would, like, Klitschko part doesn't, I don't think it phases him. Because he already knows I can beat him. And we already said going in, leading up to this, he was already in Klitschko's head. This, this fight was over as far as I was concerned. I think he's mentally lazy maybe more than anything because he can't motivate himself for the second time with Klitschko. I think, remember how animated he was when he was there with Wilder? I think he could get himself motivated for Wilder because that's a new mountain. That's Kilimanjaro. He already got Everest. Now he's going to go tag that peak and he's going to go tag the other peak, which is Anthony Joshua, get paid, and then 
call it quits. You know. Yeah, but see that that's the because if you but if you think about it, right? He called out Klitschko for two years and said, "I don't think Klitschko ever fight me." He ended up getting it. He signed up to fight David Hay, and everybody's like, "No, you David Hay will knock you out." And David Hay's the one who backed out twice. Right. So I don't think that people gunning for him bothers him. I think he's mentally weak. If the if these issues, like I said, if the mental issue isn't that isn't there. The motivation, he's mentally weak, motivating himself to get back to the mountaintop, like to stay on it, like to maybe conquer. Conquering a new one, I think, is easy for him because it's motivation. That's what I'm talking about, though. It's a different mindset once you, mm-hmm. you it, it's, it's, see, he, you can't call anybody out when you're the king of the hill, per se, because it's automatic they're calling you out. That's a different, that's a different animal. That's a different mentality. Like, it, I'm I'm the champ. Yeah, you're right. You are the champ. Now you got the bullseye on your back. But I can't know. You ain't got to worry about calling nobody out now. Mm-hmm. You got the bullseye on your back. And that's why I think he went after Wilder. Because Wilder was is always calling himself, I'm the champ. I am the... And, and so yeah. th- that motivates him. Like, I'm going after him. Because he calls up champ. Watch, I'll show him who the champ is. Exactly. But the problem with that is this. You... Hold the multiple belts. So you should. Why you knew Wilder wanted you. You knew Joshua wanted you. You knew Briggs wanted you. Hey, you don't take seriously. Not gonna understand why. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Uh, Dillian White gonna want you. Chisora. I don't know why, but he. he oh, I want you to, again. I mean, shut up. You know. But it's that whole dynamic of once you put that. Once you don't just get the belt, you get the crown. Mm-hmm. You beat Klitschko. What happened? Like I said, what happens? They do strip him. Right? Say they they strip him. And in six months, he comes back and fights. Now he has no titles. The only thing he now has, he doesn't have to defend it against everybody. He has the lineal heavyweight championship. You know, he has the ring magazine heavyweight championship. Mm. So now he doesn't have to defend that title to every comer he wants to, he he faces it. I mean, he doesn't. Have to, everybody calls him out. He only does it till once he wants to fight. So now he's like, okay, I want, I want Wilder. No yeah. titles online because I don't need it. I ain't paying no sanctioning fee. I'm already lineal champion. I'm just saying, what if he does that? He's got one dangerous road that he can go down. See, when you, that's why I say it, if. If it's completely legit, you would give up the belt. Cause you're like, look, I cause you can't if, if you if it's that if it's that serious, you can't predict when you coming back. Now, you can't you can't say my head ain't in the game, give me give me give me two months and I'm ready. Yeah. You can't say that because we're talking about a mental issue. We're not talking about a physical issue. Well, remember, I and I don't know, I haven't heard he hasn't said don't strip me of the titles. His uncle has. Not him. I haven't really heard him say anything about keeping the titles. Like I said, this... I don't know. I I know what you're talking about. I'm going to (laughs) just... You know. But... Go ahead. The thing about it is... Let him go. Because if you hold on to him... It's going to look like a publicity stunt, for one. But here's the problem with number two, though. If you keep them, this is going to haunt you. This is actually going to be your, your future mental issue. This is going to be the stage fright. This is going to be what happens with, with people who, who, like you talk about reaching the mountaintop, right? Mm-hmm. There are certain people who reach the mountaintop and they feel like they got their goal or they got up so high, they don't think they could top it. So instead of trying just to do something new or different, they live in that moment forever. And they back out of ever trying to do anything else because they're scared that they're going to bomb. This is going to be his issue. Because if you, if you say, I got, you know, I got issues, I'm going to let this go because I don't know when I'm going to be ready again. Cool. If you keep these titles, 
then everybody's going then you're gonna have the media circus about are you mentally fit to fight this time you actually will you crack up in the ring uh, how was camp you sure you don't have any issues and it, it, they're gonna they're gonna pile this shit on to you so let it go because if you don't let it go the, you know what they're gonna say so you fake like you was hurt playing around then you was going to court and then you said you was depressed. And now that the fight's off, now you back. and Because he can't act the same. He can't come back in the Tyson Fury's back. No, bro. No, no. You didn't break a leg. People are going to look. It's a car accident. Yeah, nobody died. No, I just got in a car accident. Did you really get in a car accident? Oh, I don't think nobody plays these kids. No, no, because <laughs> truth be told, and I ain't trying to be cold blooded or nothing. You could use this as, as a cover from for, from an OD, or you know, or a bad reaction to dope. Yeah, like like old NFL players. You say I'm on painkillers. No, you're not. But if you say the painkiller thing, people would just act like it never happened. Like this, this is a too much of a murky situation, and you know they they they've been numerous fighters who had jail sentences, but after they fight, you think they weren't under pressure? You think they weren't anxious or, or depressed? They still did their job. That's what I'm like. You playing, man? You play, you playing with a dead? You playing with a, a deadly game right now? Because I gotta call it a game because you've been playing games. I can't say. You you've been you've been you've been crazy this whole time. Mm-hmm. You've been off the wall this whole time. So it's like, bro, you know, that's the difference between Mike Tyson. When Mike Tyson was crazy. He's crazy. He didn't say. I need a, we knew he was crazy. We knew he. If, if, you know. And again, I'll just say this: You've never heard Tyson say this about himself. It's only the people around him. <laughs> that's the only reason I say that is because everything you're hearing is from everybody except him. Right. Mike was the same way. You heard it from everybody around him and never him. So I'm going to Ed, Ed, I'm going to err on the side of caution on this I one. For me. I, 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 because I don't, like I said, it just, it just, for me, it's a little bit more personal. Like just the, the situation, not him. I, can, right. I don't, whatever. I care about him as much as he cares about me. But just on this, I'm just gonna just leave it as is. I totally get it. It's just it's something about this that just screams foul. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't because uh, like, dude, it's just it's like you you, you, you had, he had a hard time accepting the treatment. He had he had it like I can compare him to Sonny Liston. Mm-hmm. I can compare him uh, to both Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling. Mm-hmm. You know, because they both because they fought twice and they had the you know and they both get, was supposed to be held as a hero and then got dissed and all that. Like I, I see, I can see the correlation, but what the problem is, if people don't like you, you already know that. And if you are if you are a character that says you don't need people's approval in a sense and you just off the wall, I mean I understand that as a. It's like a, a, a coping mechanism mm-hmm. and it's defense me- I get that. But I could compare him more to Sonny Liston because Sonny Liston had I wanted to, we beat Floyd Patterson and then nobody was there to, to get you mm-hmm. know, no no press, no nothing. You know, Muhammad Ali had the same thing when he was Cassius and he realized he came back with the medal, he was like, Oh, it's like that? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, it's it's certain people uh, it's not Tony. Who, who was it that beat uh, Dempsey? Dempsey? That, that was Tony? Uh, that was that big fight. That that, that was that big one. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was in, wasn't it like in Yankee Stadium or something like that? And, and he, he beat Dempsey in it and he was hated. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but he kept fighting. You know, it's, it, it's, it's already done, but I, if I was you, I wouldn't have done this. Yeah, no, I mean, he's he's painting himself into a corner. And honestly, there's probably more chance that you're right than I am. And by no means do I think, like, that you're you're not right and that I'm totally no, right. I, I, no. But 
Trust like me. I say, once that comes out, done. I'll go in on them hard. No, I, I, um, I'm, I'm just putting that side of the coin out because it's, it's just something about it. Mm-hmm. It's just it, like I, I do not like that because think about it like this. And I, I'm not trying to be—I'm not trying to be a jerk about this, but <clears throat> when uh, when Jack Johnson was fighting, mm-hmm. all the way up to Ali, people people don't want to admit this, but people would get lynched for winning. You get what I'm saying? They knew that going into the fight that if they they won. Somebody, you know, they 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 won in the wrong place at the wrong time under the wrong climate. Somebody in America would die because they won. They knew, you know, Jack Johnson got on a got fake like he was a Cuban baseball player, so he wouldn't get lynched on a train. But he kept fighting. You know, that's why I bring up Sonny Liston because I I think they they correlate more so because Sonny Liston thought as far as I've come to be what what um. A degenerate looked at as a degenerate in society, you know, not just because of race, but because of his upbringing at the time. You know, he was he was an outcast. He thought he reached the pinnacle when he had won a title to to only be dissed, like his accomplishments was nothing. So it's like, you know, you can bring up Floyd going to jail. You think anybody would have cared if he if he'd have lost that fight? Would anybody say, man, he got, he, you know, he, he's, he's mentally going through it because he's about to go to jail? Nobody would have cared. So I got to, I got to treat you with the same fairness. Like, really, dude? You really think you're going to get away? Grown up, same thing. Like, if, do I, he went to jail. I don't care you went to jail. You know, whatever. Tyson had the same issue. Man, I'm bringing up jail a lot because Sonny Liston, Tyson, right? <laughs> Shit. But that, but that is a depressing, anxiety-filled situation, you know. Which, I remember was the one of the fighters had like a, a kid or something that had to go to surgery or something like that. Buster. Was that, that, was, that was Buster. I don't know. Didn't his daughter get sick like after his mom died? Right? I don't know. But I mean, it's it's, it's too much shit in my head right now. Yeah, man. I, <laughs> I'm, uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I get better uh, soon. Get well soon, Tyson Fury. <laughs> you, you better not take now one Gronkowski esque party post picture. You know. Who knows? It may be a big F you to boxing. Who knows? Um, now I I started off with the with the the poll on how happy you are with boxing because of what happened with this fight. But in November we got some fights. We got Ward Kovalev. You got. Even the Manny Pacquiao undercard that has been filled out is actually a pretty decent card. I still won't pay for it, but it's still a pretty decent card. Um, Jesse Magdaleno, Nonito Donaire, Oscar Valdez, and uh, Hiri Shi Asawa. That was tough for Damn me to do. Damn, okay. And Zhao Shiming, your favorite flyweight of all time, uh, against uh, some, uh, yeah, some dude that I can't. He uh, got off the mill card. I get okay. it. In. in uh, a title fight for the vacated titles by Juan Fras. One of the vacated Is titles Estrada? by Estrada vacated. That's all on the Pag Vargas undercard. And actually, it's a pretty decent undercard. Much better than the shit we've been getting from Golden Boy. Uh, Probably And the is. other top rank. Uh, the, mm-hmm. It just... It, it's a, Magdalene on the Donaire should be good. Valdez is always fun to watch. She mean... He, he, That's a bad thing. He... But, she mean and he <laughs> he don't get paid like he but it is he and the signing of Nicholas Walters versus Vasil Lomachenko November 26th November barring any bullshit looks to be a great month compared to especially compared to October what October's gonna be I'm predicting this right now Loma gonna get knocked the fuck out mm. even though he's he's having he's on a yeah because of the Hustle. Don't get me wrong, he is masterful. But here's the problem. Y'all really banking on the fact that y'all been sitting Walters on nice and he's rusty. Only problem is he's not a boxer. You know, he's closer to Salido with, with a with a whole lot more power. And he ain't taking your power seriously. And I can guarantee you, 
which means he can be knocked out too. But I, I doubt you have no need of don't have type of power in your hands. It looked like it the last fight. That's for the, sure. Yeah, that was the last opponent though. Uh, Rocky Martinez. Yeah, uh, but did he gonna get his ass knocked out? So at least November looks to be good, especially after the October. This October is going to suck. Hey, at least you can catch up on all your football, all the football you want to watch because the boxing is just going to be like I watched the 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 was it what do they call it something was it knockout two what the hell they call it Tuesday toe to toe Tuesdays oh yeah it's just it's just yeah it just is what it is I wish they I had, had a couple of fights I wish I had Showbox. Or Showtime, because the Showbox cards are great. Showtime hasn't had a card, a championship boxing card in three months. Um, you know, you know what's the crazy part about it? Now that you said that, because I didn't get to see. This Tommy is our Wilson, fault. So. This is all our fault. See, for all you listeners who hadn't listened years ago, we were mapping out what boxing should do. Boxing has no season. Y'all should be making fights year round. Y'all should, you know. Y'all should have We should have the uh, we, You know our great ideas Will come up Oh yeah y'all, y'all, That's f- all. Fans should be interactive With the rounds If you remember One of our great ideas Any of those segments That we had That uh, then you've been listening For a long time Because we right. haven't done those In a long time That the fans should be Interactive with the rounds You know That people should You know The, the fighters should They should let the young Up and comers Get that thing the, 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 the big fighters should You know Enjoy their paydays And stuff like that yeah, we got everything we asked for. And you know what? Now we're like, yeah, this is bullshit. Mm. So, let's start shortchanging people, <laughs> screwing people over. Like, perfect segue, like the UFC does. The UFC notorious for not paying people. So, got a question. And, and it was about... Just how... Let's see. Was this ah uh, darn it, man? I'm just gonna shout out both of the guys: Tony Sheffy, Peter Watling. I forgot, I got him crossed. One gave me the one gave me the the poll idea. One gave me the UFC idea. So I shout out both of them. <laughs> the Zoom listener. My bad. I have, forgive me. It's been it's been a long week, people. It's been a long week. We're under inspection at work. It's just it's been a pain in the ass. But, you know, his happiness was basically with boxing where everybody else is about a five, right in the middle. They're doing some good things, doing some bad things. One of the things that he didn't like and a lot of people don't like is the pay-per-view thing. The pay-per-view model has been changed in boxing Mm -hmm. and saying how that kind of is kind of killing the sport as -hmm. as well, which I do not agree with. And and I'll easy, easy reason why. And then the UFC... Being on free TV sometimes, which is actually kind of a lot, but then they do their monthly, they do monthly pay-per-views, mm-hmm. sometimes every three weeks. Mm-hmm. So the pay-per-view market isn't what kills boxing, and it, and it sure as hell hasn't hurt, it hasn't hurt the UFC. But what the UFC gets to do that boxing doesn't get to do. And I think this is where people miss it. Everybody, well, you get to see the matchups you want. You, you you always get the matchups you want. Do we? Or do we do? But sometimes we don't. Because the biggest UFC fight about three years ago, the biggest one in history, was a mega fight. With the... Uh, GSP? GSP and um, Spider Soul. Silver. Right? Remember that was the big that was the big mega fight they could make. They but they would never they make it. Right. Why? Oh, well, GSP didn't want to go up weight. He didn't want to meet him in the middle. Mm-hmm. So you never got that fight. He was fine fight facing the guys coming up, fighting BJ Penn coming up and wait to fight him, fighting these guys who was, were, were much smaller than him. He was fine with that, but he didn't want to go up and, and meet Silver anywhere or even go up one weight class. So you actually didn't get the the biggest fight at that time, which is the biggest one in history. You get a, a fight like McGregor and um, man, my brain's Diaz? fucked. Yes, uh, Nate Diaz, my two hundred nine representing don't, don't worry, all day, baby. Know. Representing two hundred nine. That's where I'm from. That's how we do. And you got the Fresno shirt on. I do got the Fresno shirt on. And but that wasn't a fight that people were looking forward to. That's just something but great they, they stumbled upon. Yeah. Why? Because Nate. Because no. Because Conor McGregor. He actually dared to be great. 
Even though Nate wasn't the best guy, but he went up a lot of fucking weight mm. for that fight. He dared to be great. Also, as much as we get the fights we want, we also get a lot of bullshit with the UFC. Because mm. you get freak shows. They get that WWE shit going, right? And I ain't talking just about Brock Lesnar. Because that is one thing that they got. Okay, like... And they, CM Punk. They, and that, that's mm. the other side of it. So they get that freak show part of it. They get that WWE thing where look at all these guys, look at all these guys, look at uh, you know they do the the UFC uh, the, the the house the yeah, Ultimate the, Fighter the Ultimate Fighter that show yeah. which they stole from from Tough Enough on in WWE WWE mm-hmm. did that years ago with the Tough Enough where they come in and get their contract. They've taken WWE model to the T where you get all these big guys right. You ever seen R- Ronda Rousey? On not pay per view, on the UFC, no, Mm-mm. no. You saw on Showtime when she was fighting in uh, in Strike Force, and all the big guys. Conor McGregor, where's he fighting? Oh, you may see his interviews on TV, but you ain't seeing him on anything on pay per view. It's the old pay per view. It's the old WWE pay per view model. Here's Hulk Hogan. Here's Hulk Hogan every week. Doing an interview and then somebody come beat him up. But guess what? If you wanted to see him, if you wanted to Summer see him side, wrestle, yeah. you had to well, I had to pay for the pay per view or come to the show because that's the only way we're going to see him. So they get to do that. They're in a they're in a unique situation where they get to actually play off the freak show part of it. They can bring in a guy like CM Punk who's fucking terrible. His fight was awful. That was a year and a half of training for that. For a you guy didn't like that. Oh, I liked it. I thought it was hilarious. He, he gave up a lot of money to go get his ass whipped. And if you're happy for it, so be it. Good for you. But what Paul Heyman. Not a, <laughs> but what happened? No, but what if that was a pay-per-view? What if that was a pay-per-view for boxing? And they say, you know what? You know what? Um, I like I like Ric Flair. You know, they, they tried that in WWE with the boxing. A long time ago, they had that. They had the... the Forget what the contest was called, but they had a, it's kind of mm-hmm. like a tough man thing. You know, they did it and they did it. And then they brought in Butterbean to, to beat their guy, who it was a real tough man contest in WWE. And their winner got to face Butterbean in, on a pay per view. It lasted about 30 seconds. Why? Because as, as funny as Butterbean won and he, Butterbean was and he was a freak show, <laughs> just that training, how much better he was. That's right. Boxing can't do that. You those freak shows like Butterbean, that's ESPN level shit. You know that that's the third card on Showtime uh, for Christy Martin. You see, boxing can't do that because it's it's technically a it, it's a different animal. It, it is a different animal. Yes, there is more that goes into the into the MMA because there's more techniques and there's more fighting styles, but. You don't have to be a master at any of them. You just have to be really good at a lot of them. Boxing, you have to be kind of a master at them or have thunder in your hand to to, uh, to make up for bad technique. I'm about to just be just be an asshole by saying this. MMA is supposed to, MMA mixed martial art as we know it is just is is street fighting. The thing about it is that's why it can be a freak show. Mm-hmm. That's why you can win five matches and be a superstar because it's basically a bar fight in the ring. The problem with that is people act like these guys are professionals. Mm-hmm. They're not. Like you, you could tell who's a who you wouldn't want to see in a street fight or in a fight when you watch MMA. You wouldn't want to see John Jones in a fight because. The shit he does, he's not about to hold you when he's nervous. No. You wouldn't want to see Anderson Silva in, in a fight. People talk about McGregor. You wouldn't want to get punched by McGregor. You know, I would give you that. But as far as the rest of it, like kicking and all that, not so much. You ain't worried about that. You know, um, my one of my favorites back in the day, like Griffin, Liddell, mm-hmm. uh, a Rampage. You wouldn't want to see them in a damn fight. Because Griffin will take whatever your best shot is, and he's going to give you one. And you, he might break your will. Chuck, we ain't got ex- he's an Iceman for a fucking reason. Rampage, we don't know if he's going to knock you out or he's going to slam you on your neck. We know he's going to hurt you. When you're watching these MMA guys, it's like, eh, eh, boxing, different animal. It, it is a different animal. Because 
you can be a star after three wins in MMA. Oh, he talks shit. See, personally, when people when I look at Conor McGregor, I'm like, eh, eh, whatever. People, oh, he talks shit. Motherfucker only fought like, oh wow, he fought, he knocked out three, four people in a row. Great. Ooh, whoop the fucking do. You did he? Did, how long? How many years he been doing that? Mm-hmm. Did he be doing that five years, ten? If you put his career in, in the boxing, that's why it's, it's so funny. And boxers like, oh yeah, we'll fight you, Connor, because we know good and hell well you ain't gonna beat even the worst boxer's ass, because you're just a street fighter who has light gloves to talk shit. You actually think you're gonna be able to take them hands? You actually think you you stupid enough to actually get your dumb ass in the ring? That's why when people like James Tony jumped in the ring, just let me hit you. Did, what the fuck you mean? Let him hit exactly. you? Exactly. They're not gonna fight you. No, they're not gonna box you. That's just stupid. That's, well, boxers, here's where you guys got a problem. Your promoters have a problem because your promoters don't know how to promote anymore. Let's be honest. Your promoters just say, "Show up, look cool, whatever the fuck that's supposed to be," and we're gonna say you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. What the fuck that got to do with packing the house? Nothing. Fighters are fighters entertaining when they're fighting. Most of them are not. You know, that's why we like Joshua. That's why we had Wilder was knocking out people. Joshua was knocking out people. Uh, Canelo was running through people and jinxing people. That was part of his 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 uh, thing. Broner was just acting ignorant as hell. So it made you want somebody either got to beat his ass or he just gonna he, he gonna mm-hmm. blow up. You know, Madonna was uh, was even Madonna was the Supreme underdog who made millions. There's something behind that. The rest of these fighters out here just there's nothing. They got great life stories, mm-hmm. you know. Don't get me wrong. I still like Peterson's story. I still like the way Garcia beat uh, Khan. That that's a life changing story. But to be perfectly honest, you, even the Donna Stevenson old puss ass. I like his story, but you know. Okay. Sorry. No. 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 And, and then this is insane like I'm not saying which one's better I prefer boxing but that doesn't make it better has the UFC taking has it taken some of the, the fans absolutely you know why because they get to see their stars way more often than we do now if you're a star in boxing you see them twice a year say like say like Ronda Rousey she was a star whatever you want to say and it was only like nine fights but I remember seeing like she would be like on and I don't know the numbers so forgive me she'd be like on UFC 189 and then she'd be on UFC 191 I'm like that ain't but like two months later now you don't see our the boxing champions do that so what happens is you you see them all the time they're fighting probably four times a year a lot of them are fighting about four times a year that this is why Triple G has gotten the love and the popularity he has because people remember seeing his last fight People don't remember seeing Danny Garcia's last fight because they don't know when the fuck the last time we fought was. We know it was the Guerrero fight, but what was the fight before that? We always had to go back. Hey, um, wh- 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 who's fighting? What's, what about Gary Russell? You, you see, another thing. You see these guys; they never fight, so it's really not. The UFC has that's their that's the the one thing that they have is that they can actually schedule these guys to fight more often. It keeps them into the public eye. But, you know, like I was saying, the freak show. And, and, and that's just a, 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 a bad way of saying it. But what I'm saying by it is they can take gimmicks. And make them something. And make them something. Gimmicks of the women. Not because women can't fight, but most of their stars, they're pretty easy on the eyes. They're not the worst looking women ever. You know, Gina Carano was pretty good looking. She had big giant tits and everybody liked that. And, you know, Ronda Rousey, when you when you clean her up, she ain't bad. She's eh. But she ain't bad. She ain't ugly. She ain't, she ain't cyborg. I was about to say that. She ain't cyborg, right? There's a reason. There's a reason, Lucia Riker. You never saw her fight uh, Layla Ali. There's a reason you saw Layla Ali. There's a reason you didn't see Ann Wolf fight all the time. Why is that? Well, I wonder why. See, but, yeah. and they're like, eh, get that out of here. We don't want to see. You better be able to fight. You better be more than just pretty and be able to fight. And people don't want to see it. The UFC kind of just has, they kind of like, well, you keep the cute girls, the ugly ones, we'll put them way down the court, and, you know. Right, but bo- boxing doesn't have a, you know, maybe, and, and, and this might be cold, but maybe Floyd Mayweather needs to start a marketing class for boxers. 
you know, either because you because boxers seem not to understand, dude. I mean, when when the guys were showing up with the ridiculous clothes, that was entertaining to me. I'm like, I don't know who, what made your stupid ass thinking that a pastel plaid uh, uh, quilt of a jacket. Was 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 a good idea, but you know what? That's what MMA fighters do when you talk about the M, the MMA WWE part of it. Mm-hmm. When I look at Chuck Liddell, he kind of reminded me of the Road Warriors. Yeah, he had that. You know, you know what I'm saying? That. You know, when I look at Rampage, I'm like, I know I got an ignorant friend like that. You get what I'm saying? When I look at Forrest Griffin, I'm like, yo. When I looked at, at Anderson Silva, I'm like, you look, you an awkward dude to be kicking people ass like this. You know. When you look at GSP, you was like, what? Where you get this corny ass dude with the suits? Like, how is he still winning? Well, the, the the guy that uh the legend that Chuck not Chuck, but uh GSP beat from from like Nebraska or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can see it. Oh, good old American guy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's and, a wrestling guy. And it's like, uh, I get it. Boxing don't have that's why I said it needs personality. You know, yeah. I don't mind, like, I, we don't mind the fights with Ward and, and Kovalev because we know they're both killers. Makes sense. But, I mean, the hardest thing that I've seen in the last couple of years was actually when Laura walked up on the stage with, with Canelo. Look, you, you, they you got, scared. They got him to fight. You're right. And then one last thing I think that really brings the popularity is because, like you're saying, it's, it, 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 it's kind of a glorified street fight. Yes, there's rule, and yes, there's technique. Don't I don't think that there's not. I don't think that if I got in the ring with him, that I'd get my that I wouldn't get my ass kicked because I would, because I ain't trained like that, you know. But what happens is a lot of guys see those and say, "Hey, that kind of looks like my fight," because it went straight to the ground. Because when you get in a fight in the street, that shit goes to the ground. That's just how it goes. He hit me. Get, get grab know? him. But you know that's how it goes. That. So it really looks like what they do, and then they go take them a class at the local uh, jujitsu place, and and they get to like a, a pink belt, or you know they get that second belt, and now they think that they're that they're, they're you know that's part of it, you know like nobody goes and takes you know three months of boxing classes and think you know what I can go for the I'm belt, knock out everybody on the street. No, it don't work like that. That's the technique is a little bit different, it's a little bit sharper. I hate say I hate the word sweet science. I hate that shit. I I fucking there, there's one thing that that annoy. I hate the sweet science bullshit because it's been taken over by that means slick boxing from the outside and movement. Science sometimes there ain't been no defense in boxing. No, in but sometimes in science you gotta blow shit up. You not Bill Nye the science guy. No, but you you ever watch MythBusters? Yes, there was science in there. They blew a lot of shit yeah. up because sometimes you gotta blow shit up. Sometimes it ain't just dissecting. You know. You know, everybody's like, oh, look, it. he he just dissected his opponent. He, look, we, we all took science. It wasn't all just cutting open the frog. Sometimes you got to blow some shit up. Sometimes you got to make that, that volcano for your science fair project that blows up. Yo, I hate the sweet science thing. That just I, that's, I, that's something that gets, I get annoyed I, with. I, look, I get it. Now, now as a fan, I, um, I look at it like, okay, so if I watch MMA, I personally think, yeah, I kick your ass. He said, what do you mean? He, look, man. Okay, he, I wrestled before. You're not going to... There's nothing impressive about winning a street fight wrestling. Everybody's going to look at you like if you wrestle somebody in a street fight, motherfucker scared he's going to get his ass whipped, so you grabbed him. That's what happened. Now, if you pick him up and you slam the shit out of him, that's different. That's but different. if you just grab him and hold him... <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Until you both breathe yeah. in. Who, 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 boy, I look at, who, and the champion of what? Of what? You know, when you boxing, it's different because everybody, it's just like watching football. When you look, into, when you look outside in the crowd of football fans, you know 85% of them people ain't never going to play football because they don't want to get hit like that. When you look at MMA fans, I can do that. No, you can't. You, you get your ass whipped. Mm-hmm. But they all believe, I can, I can go out there and do that. Give, give me five minutes. But that, that, but that, I think that really does feed into the popularity because when you have that belief as a fan, you're like, Ooh, I want to, you know, it's a, it's almost in line like you meet an athlete, right? Or even anybody, any personality, you you meet them, and they're real cool to you. You're going to be 
loyal to them for the rest of your life. Like now that that dude's cool. I'm I'm down with that person because they're cool. Um, and because I can do what they do, that's cool because that's like me. So they kind of have that same feeling. But you don't see you don't see f- the footwork of like a rigging dough and the power of a Tyson. Well, I can do that. No, you like Ooh, that ain't good. that ain't yeah that, yeah. That's, 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 that's nobody. When I was a kid in Chicago, everybody imitated Jordan. Nobody in their right mind was like, oh, yeah. matter. I take this back. Uh, Michael Finley. They won a state championship. My high school won a state championship. To win a state championship, he got a chance to play with Mike. He said the wrong thing to Mike. Oh, yeah, I got, I got you. I got you. Mike said, really? Oh, so, so let's play some horse. So Michael Finley's story basically goes, yeah, I fuck with the wrong person at the time. So Michael, Mike, Michael Jordan let a, few, a kid who was going to be a future all-star in the NBA know, kid, sit your punk ass down. You can't do none of this shit. Can you do this? Mike, that's illegal in horse. You can't. I'm, I'm just 18 years old. I don't give a fuck. You, you want to play horse. You the man, right? Can you do this? Sing the song. Sometimes you dream that you or me, right? <clears throat> I just, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to say it one good time. It may make you great. You're very entertaining because every because you don't have to. The fighters don't have to look like they're in shape. The the the, the, the fans don't have. To, they drink just like it's kind of like Stone Cold Steve Austin. MMA has always WWE. It's Stone. You're Stone Cold Steve. Austin. But the di- the difference is your ass never met Stone Cold Steve Austin. You ain't gonna walk up on Stone Cold. Let me have a bit. Who is this big ass giant that I'm? Yeah, you didn't know he was that big. It was just TV that you mm-hmm. thought. You thought that big ass brick wall was just your size, didn't you? <laughs> no, it's not happening. When you meet boxers, you don't say that. You don't walk up on a boxer like, "Yeah, I can take you." No, that's not a good idea because he's gonna punch you. Yeah, I I'll close out. Last, I'll, there's a just real fast. Jay Moore's podcast. He had Sugar Ray Leonard on this last show, right? And he's he's messing around because him and Sugar Ray they've known each other for a mm-hmm. while and they're neighbors. He's like, man, Sugar, Sugar Ray, you 60, I can take you. And, uh, and Sugar Ray's like, uh-uh. And I guess his eyes changed. And Jay Moore's like, dude, I'm, I'm just sorry. Playing. I just saw your eyes change. He goes, yeah, don't do that to me. But that's the mentality. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, like, MMA is great. I watch some of those big events. I like some of those guys. I'm more of a casual, I would say a casual MMA fan anymore. Um, now that it's all UFC, I kind of don't watch as much. I liked it when it was a little bit more separated. I liked when Strike Force was by itself, and you had mm-hmm. Nick Diaz, and and, and you had uh, Tyron Woodley, and who's actually a champion now mm-hmm. over there, and who he just he just beat uh, another guy yeah. that that was a champion over there. But I liked it when it was a little bit more separated. You know, e- even the even the you know uh, why can't I think? You know, what? Kevin Ferguson. Well, actually, I think it was fucking first. Well, I think his real name, Kimbo, Kimbo Slice. I thought it was first name for his real name for yeah. Kimbo Slice. Was a freak show. It was just a, it was a, but, it was an internet sensation thing, and he ended up fighting, blowing up. blowing up. Why? Because you can do that. You can fight the five six fights like you were saying. That kind of leads people and it gets it gets people more involved. It's a beautiful strategy. I ain't knocking it because if boxing could do it, they would have done it by now. Mm-hmm. They just can't. They play by two different rules, and that's why. Using Kimball as a reference for everybody else. This is how you know the difference. Boxing used to have movie stars. They don't anymore. WWE. You got to still count the rock. But they, they had a, a string where they had movie stars. Who's the movie stars now? UFC fighters. Mm-hmm. So the personality is moved to the UFC. So if boxing is the last of personality, what does that tell you? Mm-hmm. Because remember, Kimbo was even in movies. Yeah. Ronda Rousey was in a movie. Karina oh, was in a yeah, movie. She's getting ready to come out. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. the, the, the last boxer, boxing star that was in a movie. Man, Roberto Duran was in Harlem Nights, baby. See, you had to go that far back. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but uh, Gabe and uh, oh, yeah. Gabe Ballou and yeah, but that Ortiz. Was Ortiz. No, and, and, and Ortiz was in one. Not a boxing movie because Andre Ward was also in that movie right. too in, in Creed. But that's a boxing movie. I don't count those. So, so uh, the, the Ortiz is the only one I can count. And people, yeah, Ortiz was, <laughs> yes. with Rousey. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. 
<laughs> Rosie was in that too. Uh, yeah, because yeah, she, she was in she was in you're Fast thinking, and the Furious. You're thinking Carano. She well, both of those guys were in Fast and Furious. Gina okay. Carano was in seven or six and six. Yeah, and Ron, it's Ron was in seven. It was in one hundred thirteen. One of them was in. And Disney. Paul Walker will not be in eight. We're not gonna do that. Oh, that's my bad. <laughs> I had to go one step too far. When I see you again, habitual line stepper. <laughs> um. Let's just close it out there. Oh, one thing. UFC can do, like you're saying, the five fights. Because that is, you know, how the, the personality is now. Everybody doesn't have the patience. They want everything now. Mm-hmm. UFC kind of gives it to you. Where you can get the five, six fights. And now you're fighting for a title. Or you're on, or you're your first fight and you're on pay-per-view. Where it's that immediate satisfaction, right? Boxing isn't like that. You got to get your, for the most part. It has changed. It's starting to change a little bit. But these guys still aren't names. You know, Corny Lomachen- shit. Lomachenko and 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 uh, even Shimin got his title shot early, and uh, Usyk just got his title in his ninth fight. The monster uh, Inui. Mm-hmm. It's changing, but they still aren't superstars. Maybe if they if boxing would learn how to feed that a little bit quicker. See, okay, you, you make Floyd as a as a. Enigma, mm-hmm. well, you know, it's just a, a, a myth or something, a character, character. You got to go back then. Big E Roy, kind of a character, not so much, but kind of. But Prince Nassim, <coughs> character. Yeah. You know, B Hop had a character. These motherfuckers are just no characters. They're just meh. Yeah, no characters. I mean. You know what, man? We're just going too long on this bullshit. Because <laughs> cause, cause what I really want to say is this. True be told, boxers right now, y'all look like blue-collar, corny motherfuckers who don't want to actually take it there. And, and the worst part about it is taking it back. Tyson Fury was the closest thing we yeah. had to a character. And, he, and he's in Arkham Asylum. Well, he could be. He's able to joke. All right. That's it. Close it up there. Got an hour and 15 out of a show that we thought we were going to get 40 minutes out of. That's how fucking good we are. With no callers. Because <laughs> usually these shows go, go that long with nothing. They, they got callers to help them out. Um, follow the show. Cheap Seats Box on, on Twitter. iTunes, Stitcher. Rate, review, subscribe. Help us out. You'll be the next unofficial sponsor. Patreon.com uh, slash Cheap Seats Box if you want to donate. Email the show. Cheap Seats Boxing at gmail.com. Questions, comments, anything like that, always hit us up on Twitter. Follow the show if you haven't. Email us because we'll always get back to you. And that's it, man. Anything else, JP? This is where the fighters fight and the fighters commentate. I'm going to shut the hell up. And we, we did a <laughs> lot of commentating tonight because we do it just like you from the cheap seats because we ain't buying no tickets. God damn it. Peace. <laughs>